darker they became, with eyes of gold is a short story penned by the speculative fiction luminary Ray Bradbury, making its debut in 1949, originally christened the naming of names, though distinct from a later tale bearing the same title, it delves into the transformative effect of distant relocation on individuals and their identities. While not integrated into his renowned Martian Chronicles, 1950, a compendium of narratives centered around Earth migrants on Mars, it shares thematic parallels, envisioning a colony of Earthlings settling the Red Planet. The narrative probes the nexus between nomenclature and territory, the repercussions of colonization on the colonizers, and the inexorable flux experienced both personally and collectively. Harry Bittering, accompanied by his wife Cora and their trio of children, Dan, Laura, and David, arrives by a rocket on Mars, seeking refuge from the looming specter of nuclear conflict on Earth. Yet, upon disembarking, Harry is immediately unsettled by the unfamiliar, dusty ambience and sweltering climate, urging his wife to retreat to Earth. However, Cora insists they have journeyed too far to turn back, compelling the family to forge ahead into their new existence. Erecting a modest white abode amidst a community of fellow settlers, the Bitterings find themselves neighboring the ancient vestiges of a Martian city, its enigmatic remnants devoid of clues regarding its former inhabitants' fate. As they navigate the rhythms of daily life, Harry grapples with an enduring disquiet stirred by the alien landscape. He muses on the notion that the settlers ought to have retained the original Martian appellations for the indigenous geographical features, rather than imposing earthly names upon them. Thoughts of the Martian designations for various entities begin to occupy his mind. Then, one fateful day, a transmission arrives, bearing the grim tidings of an atomic strike on New York, signaling the cessation of rocket voyages to Mars and dashing any hope of a return to Earth. Though inwardly devastated by this revelation, Harry conceals his emotions from his family, assuring them instead that they must persevere and await the eventual resumption of rocket launches. Subsequently, Harry observes subtle alterations in the flora of his garden. Despite originating from Earth seeds, the vegetables and flowers exhibit nuanced variations in color and form. Alarmed by this phenomenon, Harry resolves to exclusively consume the Earth-sourced provisions stored in their freezer. Additionally, he discerns changes in his family members, their skin darkening under the Martian sun, their eyes assuming a golden hue. Growing increasingly disconcerted, Harry resolves to construct a rocket for their return to Earth. Soliciting aid from the men in the village, he is met with ridicule and indifference, their nonchalance toward the ongoing changes further unsettling him. When Harry queries about the duration of their golden eyes, one villager dismissively suggests they've always possessed such eyes, prompting Harry to scrutinize his own reflection. To his alarm, he discovers golden flecks adorning his eyes. Undertaking the task of building a rocket in the metal shop of a villager named Sam, Harry toils tirelessly, growing gaunt as the freezer's dwindling supplies force him to reluctantly consume Martian fare. Finally, when Cora informs him of the depletion of frozen provisions, Harry reluctantly acquiesces to partake in Martian sustenance. Encouraged by Cora, he takes a break from his endeavors to join his family for a leisurely hike and a refreshing swim in the Martian canals. Their eldest son, Dan, expresses a desire to adopt the Martian name Linnell, feeling disconnected from his earthly moniker. After some deliberation, Harry and Cora reluctantly acquiesce to his request. As summer draws near, the villagers organize a seasonal migration to Martian-designed villas, boasting cooler environs and swimming amenities. Persuaded by Sam, Harry agrees to postpone work on the rocket until autumn. With the family embracing Martian customs, they leave behind the majority of their earthly possessions, their children now fully embracing their new Martian identities. Come summer's end, Harry and Cora, gazing from their villa onto the abandoned village, ponder a return, conversing partially in Martian tongue. Fondly reminiscing about their former abode, they jest about the perceived quaintness of earthly ways and dwellings. Opting to prolong their stay in the villa, they entertain the notion of revisiting their former dwelling in a year or two. Five years later, Earth military personnel arrive on Mars, heralding the cessation of war and renewed plans for Martian colonization. Discovering the deserted village, the lieutenant recounts interactions with indigenous inhabitants, described as possessing darkened skin and golden eyes, proficient in English but clueless regarding the fate of the American colony. Speculating on the villagers' demise due to a presumed plague, the captain resolves to establish a new colony, intending to christen the surrounding landscape with American-themed names. 
The story concludes with the lieutenant, captivated by the distant water and mist-shrouded hills, momentarily diverted from his captain's discourse. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.